I recently watched Curtis Judd's video about the misconceptions of 32-bit float, and I have some somewhat spicy takes on the matter. Now, Curtis is a true gent, and I am a subscriber of his and a fan, but I'm also a 32-bit float convert, so I felt in this case I needed to fly the flag. This is just a difference in opinion, uh, which is fine, and I hope you don't take this too seriously, and I hope it's just a fun watch. I always timestamp everything in these videos so you can skip to the bits you want, and if you would like to join me and become a subscriber, I would be honoured, so please do hit that button. In Curtis's video, he addresses common misconceptions that he sees about 32-bit float, and there's plenty of good information in the video, but the general message is that you don't really need 32-bit float, and that preamp and analog to digital converter quality is way more important. Here's the thing, and I, I see what Curtis is saying and there's merit to it, but companies that make audio gear are moving to 32-bit flow. It's inevitable, it's happening across the board. So really, preamp and AD converter quality is kind of irrelevant. Not that it's not important, but it's not relevant to this. Why should you have to choose between 32-bit floats and good quality preamps and converters? They're not mutually exclusive, and I don't know why Curtis adopted this kind of either-or mentality when you can pretty easily get both. I have to do a little preamp and analog to digital converter rant just to get it off my chest. Curtis cites the Sound Devices Mix Pre series as his gold standard to beat when it comes to preamp and converter quality, which by the way is not always that easy to quantify other than, well this costs more than that so it must have much better converters, or I think this sounds better than that so this must have better converters. I would argue that when it comes to the preamps and converters of this type of mobile recording device, I would say they have a very high floor and low ceiling when it comes to quality. I would say the quality of that mix pre-series is equal to and no better than uh, an audio interface that you would use with your computer like the Focusrite 2i2. And I know you can get hourly equal quality which includes 32-bit float for less cash. A really good example of this is the Tascam Porter Capture X6, which is relatively inexpensive, has dual AD converters at different gain stages. Tascam's HDDA High Definition Discrete Architecture preamps, which are clean, quiet, and offer lots of gain. And guess what? 32-bit float. You can have both quality components and 32-bit float. There's no need to compromise. Curtis also doesn't stress the robustness you get from 32-bit float files when compared to 24 or 16-bit. When we apply effects and adjustments, each process can introduce small errors or rounding issues, and these errors are minimized when using 32-bit float. So if you're someone who likes to process your audio files after recording, like I do, 32-bit float is going to have your back and be way more forgiving. And then you have gain flexibility. In editing, I mean. With 32-bit floats floating point, you can both amplify and attenuate the signal without introducing errors. As if you were traveling back in time and changing the gain level you recorded the audio at. Curtis mentions recording 24-bit audio at lower gain levels to prevent clipping. Well, with 32-bit floats, the fidelity of the files will be better maintained when boosting the volume up to a workable level. Facts, bruv. He also goes on to mention that 32-bit float is used as a marketing tool, and that is true enough, but I would argue it's kind of worth shouting about. And also consider this, how many potential customers truly understand what 32-bit float is? I mean, to a lay person, on paper, 32-bit float would obviously look better than 24-bit, but I wonder, without them kind of reading up about it and researching into the technical side of 32-bit, would they truly understand the huge difference that it can make? So I wonder, is 32-bit float truly selling gear to new customers? I don't know. At the end of the day, Curtis suggests that 32-bit float is unnecessary. And I suppose if you're gonna take it literally, I, I suppose that is true. But ask yourself this, don't you want the best? I say there are no real disadvantages to using it, so why wouldn't you? After all, if, as Curtis says, there's little point to using 32-bit float unless you're A, recording nature, 
or B, in a situation where you don't have control of your gain level, of which those two seem like phenomenal reasons to use 32-bit float. Why are Curtis's gold standard company, Sound Devices, introducing 32-bit float into their entire range? It's a rhetorical question. Anyway, that's it for now. Do check out my video called What is 32-bit Float? where I go uh, into uh, more depth without getting too into the weeds in the technical side of things. Uh, it's a good watch. Um, I'll link it. Anyway, I hope you found this fun. I've loved making this for you. Curtis, um, I apologize. This is just a bit of fun. Um, and um, I've made hundreds of videos like this, of which Google's algorithm has chosen this video for you to watch next. And the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys. Thank you.